We have been enjoying the sounds of Sass Jordan, fresh off her appearance at the ASCAP Music Cafe down at the Stanfield Gallery on Lower Main Street. And Sass joins us now. Sass, uh, welcome. Thank you. So, you having fun here at Sundance? Absolutely. I don't see how you could not have fun here. Yeah, exactly. Tell us a little bit about uh, your your new CD, which is coming out uh, it's very coming out soon. In March. It's coming out in March, and I'm really excited about that, even though that's crazy these days, apparently. <laughs> to, to be excited <laughs> to about be an album? CD coming, I was like, oh, wow, that old chestnut. <laughs> but I'm I'm thrilled, you know, because, I mean, that's what I do. I love it. And uh, talk about, uh, you know, is, is there something new for you on the on this CD? I think um, new, I don't know, it's like, it's, uh, there's a lot of vocal harmonies and stuff like that on it. There's some sort of Motown-ish kind of vibe as well. It's, it's not um, heavy rock. Mm -hmm. The next one will be. The next one yeah, will, will, will be? Yeah. The next album or the next song you're going to play for us tonight? The next album, because right. it's hard to be heavy rock with just an acoustic guitar. So why did you decide to go uh, a little bit more, you know, lighter and acoustic? It was just a vibe. My whole career, that's what I've been doing. I've always been just, you know, what's the vibe? What's the feeling I feel right at this time? And this, like, when I first started out, the, that kind of sound, that, like, California sound, you know, the Eagles, Crosby, Stills, Nash, mm -hmm. that was really happening in the 70s when I first started singing and being in bands. And it was just sort of, let's go back and revisit the roots Again, you know, those kinds of roots. I got other ones, too. Uh, well, I'm a bit of a redwood. We, we, we won't talk about those, <laughs> the other, any, any other roots. But, right. uh, you know, one of the hallmarks of, of being here at the festival is, you know, this co combination of music and film. Uh, what, you know, do you, do you have a sort of a, a filmic sense, a uh, cinematic sense when you're, when you're writing your songs? I, I honestly, Ori, I think that music is the soundtrack of life, not to sound too cliche, but I mean, it, it is everything. In, when you hear a song, it instantly takes you back to where you were when that song was important to you. You know what I mean? It's instant. You, and, and, and if you had a film with no music in it, have you seen one like that? I have once, and it was the most bizarre, odd thing. It just didn't work. Mm -hmm. Music makes the drama, it's, it's, it's like the fabric of life. You know, that's uh, I'm so deep. Yeah, no, I'm a little too deep. For no, that. but uh, you know, and have you written music for for, for film? film? Not specifically for film, but um, stuff it, that I've written has been in in, in films and, and television shows. Yeah, mm -hmm. is yeah. that is that an interesting experience that's, when you it, when you see a song that had maybe one meaning uh, when you wrote it? <laughs> uh, a filmmaker has their own interpretation, and yeah. uh, suddenly it gets into a scene and it, it changes things. Yeah, but I mean, you gotta expect that once you've written a song and you've recorded it. I mean, it, it doesn't belong to you anymore. Okay, it belongs to whoever. It belongs to the world, Inter right? Yeah, interprets it their way. Okay. I've heard some funny stuff, but I've I've done interviews where I was interviewing people and thought that their song was about this, and ooh, no, it wasn't. Lesson learned. <laughs> Lesson learned. I shut up. 